There is always a place for everyone in space. And all we need to do is to learn how to fly a spacecraft. There is much more to flying a spacecraft than to fly an aircraft. One that flies a spacecraft is called an astronaut. The one that flies an aircraft is called a pilot. And the one that moves a car is called a driver. The reason why many have not secured their place in space is because of the rigor of learning to fly a spacecraft. The reason why many may just end up driving is because of the cost and the challenge of flying an aircraft. We have crawlers, we have runners, we have drivers, we have pilots, and we have astronauts. Nobody is taking your seat, your seat is empty. Nobody's contesting with your own spacecraft. It's yours. Your name is on it. What you need, what anybody will need, is to learn how to fly his own spacecraft. Back in 1984, in the beginning days of our ministry, I had God say to me, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, I am. Any right person in his right mind <laughs> wants the top. Children in primary school wants the top. Farmers want to be the best farmer anywhere. So then whatever I say to you, do it. That those who work, work with many. Those who run, run with a few because the tracks are limited. But that those who fly, fly alone. The syndrome of who you know is what matters is zero. It's what you know that matters the most. So those who walk, walk by common sense. You don't have to go to school to learn how to walk. <laughs> you just uh, grow up and then uh, you see everybody standing, you to want to stand. So you took the first step and then you shook a bit. You took the next one, next one you shook a bit. And then you try to move, you stagger, you fall. You stand up again, Abba. What happened? I must walk. You don't go for lessons. That when thou walkest, thou shalt take first step, and then you fall, then you wake up and take another one, and then you stagger, then you fall. No, no, no. There's no lesson. Has it ever occurred to you that no child needs to be told we have to put the nipple of the mother's breast? Common sense. He cried. He didn't put it here. <laughs> I didn't put it on the tummy. A child wants to wee wee. He doesn't open his mouth. They say, Why is he? I want to wee wee. <laughs> no, he, he just came with him. It's natural sense. You walk by common sense, you're wrong by principles, but you only fly by instructions. Uh, what a challenge to this generation who hate instructions with passion. We have a generation of young people that hate instruction with passion. They never will stand up to their parents. No, you can't tell me what to do. The one that must fly a spacecraft must be addicted to instructions. Anyone among us in this class that really desires to take his place in space must love instructions with passion. You must... You must have demonstrable passion for instructions. That's why heroes are reducing in number. Generation after generation, they are reducing in number. People who dare what others have never dared, they are reducing in number. Because they are not prone to instructions. This syndrome of, I've sent my children to school, they have graduated. I have a house, I have a car. What am I doing for in life? Isn't that enough? How many lives have you touched? How many hopeless people have you given hope? What can be called your impact in your field?
what will your world remember you for? Not that you are craving, you are not craving for fame, but what will be called your footprint when you are no longer here? PhD class. They are written by people with non-PhD. Have you checked it yourself? <laughs> and then we joyfully recommend it. Exactly so. God, those folks just uh, took responsibility to put in place their discoveries. They may not have discovered as much as you. They are just smarter than you. And then you have to read their books. It's not the training that one receives alone, but the engagement of the discoveries made. The engagement. Otherwise, the ones who taught you, why are they not flying at your level? The question is, what contributions can you say yourself that you have made? What feat can you say you have accomplished? We run the World of Faith Bible Institute in our uh, mission. Now, I drafted it 90%, the content. I taught it 80% in the beginning. I taught the teacher who will join me to teach. Now it's all over about 60 nations today, helping people to discover themselves and make many out of their life. What contributions can be traceable to him? What feats has he accomplished? And what impact has he engendered? These are all self examination questions. Anybody can ask himself anytime. It's about taking the lead in the given task. So you have today a leading entrepreneur is taking the lead in that sector. A leading construction engineer. A leading construction company. Amen. Then you have a leading evangelist who is routing nations and cities. You have a leading teacher of the world who traverses the nations, you know, distributing the bread given him by Christ. Amen. A leading fashion design is covered two continents, three continents, and five continents, and it's going. So leadership is validated by taking the lead in your field. That's where it begins.